Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover different types of distributions. So let's get started. All right, the first distribution that we have is the normal distribution. So obviously, as most of you guys are familiar with it, this is a normal distribution, which is also known as the bell curve because it looks like a bell. And the density curve is symmetrical. So it's symmetrical here. So basically the right-hand side here is symmetric to the left-hand side. Normal distribution is defined by its mean and by its standard deviation. Basically, in the center here, you will find the mean. And the definition of standard deviation is basically the dispersion from the mean, which is how my curve is dispersed around it. If I have a very small standard deviation, that means all the data are accumulated here around basically the mean. But if I have a large standard deviation, that means the data is dispersed away from the mean. So normal distribution is centered about the mean and with standard deviation indicates its spread, which is how spread the data is. At point X, the height is represented as follows. This is basically the equation. Don't worry about the equation. I just put it right there. I just want you guys to understand this is basically the normal distribution. And if you want to have one sigma, this is one sigma, okay? This is two sigma, as again, as you increase this, the basically the sigma, you will increase, you will stay, become far away from the mean. And here I have three sigma and so on. All right, okay. The next one is what we call a standard normal distribution. So standard normal distribution curve has zero mean and has one standard deviation. So what you could do, and I think you guys, most of you guys I assume have done that somewhere if, if you take any um, statistics course or any other, you know, like basic, uh, basic mathematics course, you can take the data that is normally distributed and convert it to a standard normally distributed data like this. So you can convert data that is normally distributed to make it follow a standard normal distribution by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. Basically, I can say, you know what, take my points, x, subtract the mean from it and divide by the standard deviation. And then I will come up with what we call it z distribution or we'll call it, you know, the standard normal distribution, which basically looks like that. Now I have zero mean and the standard deviation sigma now is equals to one, basically. Okay, so for normally distributed data, you will find that there is 68.3% of observations are within one standard deviation from the mean. So between minus one and one, this is 68.3. And then between two standard deviations, so between like two minus two sigma and two sigma, you will find 95.4% of observations. And then you will find 99.7% of observations are within three standard deviations from the mean. Okay, all right, okay. The next distribution that we're going to cover is known as the Poisson distribution. Poisson distribution is the discrete probability distribution of the number of events that occur in a specific period of time. Poisson distribution is very important and helpful mainly for planning purposes, as it enables managers to analyze customer behavior as they visit a restaurant or a store, for example. Uh, I know it might be a little bit difficult to understand, but you know, I, I here I include a couple of examples for you guys so you'll be able to understand what do I mean by Poisson distribution. Let's assume that you are a restra restaurant manager and you wanted to know how many customers visit the store. So the store manager only knows that the average visitors are only five, but he wanted to know the actual numbers, but the problem is this number changes drastically. So you might find one people, you might find 50, you might find you no know, changes basically throughout the day as well. So a Poisson distribution enable the manager to analyze the probability of various events. So you can say, well, my, the probability of having zero customers coming to the restaurant is, let's say, X. The probability of seven or more customers visiting the restaurant is, let's say, Y, and so on. So that's how you do the Poisson distribution, basically, from in a nutshell. So the question is, okay, when to apply Poisson distribution? So these are the requirements if you wanted to apply Poisson distribution. First, the events have to be independent. So if one event takes place, it does not impact the probability of another event taking place as well. For example, customers visiting the restaurant or store 
all these customers, they don't know each other. They are independent of each other, okay? All these events are independent. Then you will be able to apply Poisson distribution. The rate of event occurrence is constant. And you have to ensure as well that the probability of an event taking place is proportional to the time period as well. And here is the equation or the formula for Poisson distribution. You basically know the average, if you guys remember, as a store manager, all the information you have is basically the average of visitors, let's say five in this example. So that's the five that I have here. And using X, I can say, okay, how many customers are, are coming? Let's say, what is the probability of having, let's say 10 customers or 20 and so on. And that will be X that I'm gonna use here to substitute in this equation. Again, I know it might be a little bit confusing. That's why I have an example for you guys. All right. Let's assume that you are a manager of a car dealership and you know that the average numbers of cars sold is two cars per day. The question is, what is the probability that exactly five cars will be sold tomorrow? Okay. So the solution is, since we have two cars sold per day, then I know the mean, so that mu equals to two. So that's one, one of them. Basically, this is my equation, so now I know one variable. The second one is, since we want to know the likelihood that five cars are being sold tomorrow, so x will be equals to five, okay, that's it. And I know the e is 2.718, that's a constant. I can simply go there and substitute in the Poisson's formula, as you guys can see here. I can basically put 2.718 to the power of minus two, and then two to the power of five divided by F, but I'm sorry, divide by five uh, factorial, and then you'll be able to come up with basically the probability, which is 0 0.036. So the probability of selling five cars tomorrow is 0 0.036. Again, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. All right, what about the third distribution? So the third distribution that I have here is called the binomial distribution. A binomial distribution measures the probability of success or failure outcome when the experiment is repeated several times. For example, I want to know the outcomes of taking the AWS machine learning exam. Well, I only have two outcomes, either pass or fail. Then I will be able to apply my binomial distribution. For example, a coin toss has only two possible outcomes, either head or tail. So basically the probability of each event is 0.5. And here is the equation if you wanted to apply binomial distribution. So if you have n trials, if you are gonna run this experiment, let's say 10 times, I'm going here and, and substitute with n equals to 10. And I can simply basically substitute here in these numbers, in these equations, and come up with probability of x. So p of x will be the probability of x successes out of n trials where n is the number of trials and pi here is the probability of success, okay? So this, again, don't worry about the equation. I just want to give you an idea of what binomial distribution might be used for. All right. What about Bernoulli distribution? So Bernoulli distribution, actually, it's, it's kind of, you know, I think of it as, you know, like a, the cousin of binomial distribution. The only difference is binomial distribution is a special case of it and it's only meant if you are going to have one single run, okay? So in binomial distribution, we had n here, n trials. I can actually run the experiment many, many times. However, here, I'm going to have, for the Bernoulli distribution, I'm going to have only one single run. So simply put, it is a binomial distribution with a single trial, with one coin toss. Bernoulli distribution is a discrete probability, dis probability distribution that has only two outcomes as well, either success or failure. For example, if I'm going to toss, let's say, a coin, I have the probability of head, or let's say success in this case, might be 0.5, and the probability of getting a tail or a failure is 1 minus p or 1 minus 0.5, that will generate 0.5 as well. So the probability of a failure is labeled on the x-axis as zero, and the success is labeled as one, as you guys can see here. And I would be simply able to plot the probability of both and the summation of both should be one. As you guys can see, the probability of failure is 0.3. The probability of success is 0.7. That's it. And that simply summarizes our Bernoulli distribution. 
And that should conclude the distribution section. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please recall again that I have my normal distribution. I have my Poisson distribution. I have my binomial distribution. And I have my Bernoulli distribution, which kind of special case of binomial. And that's all what I have. Please enjoy AWS machine learning certification course. And I will see you guys in the next lecture.